This one liter PC from HP has a Core i7 processor, lots of expandability, very good fit and finish, and it has become one of my favorite Project Tiny Mini micro notes. But the weird thing is, the only reason that we have this is because I made a mistake while ordering. Oh, hold on, let's back up for a sec. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this system in front of me is the HP Elite Mini 600 G9. Now I know what you're thinking, why does HP have to have such a long name for such a tiny box? But this model number is the first one of the new naming scheme that we've tested from HP in our Project Tiny Mini Micro series. Now at STH, we've tested a bunch of one liter PCs from Lenovo, HP, and Dell, hence the Tiny Mini Micro. And with that new naming scheme, we get a ton of new features in this, and I think that this is much closer to like the 800 line than we had seen in previous generations. And I'm gonna go through the system, and I wanna show you why this is so close to the 800 series. But HP did an awesome job in terms of the performance, power consumption, and noise on the system. I think if you're looking for like kind of some of those like small mini PCs out there, you should definitely take a look at this, especially for the price I got it at. And with that, let's start with the price. Now, you can go on the HP configurator and buy these things, and there are different coupons and all that kind of stuff, but I bought this one on eBay, and that's part of what the funny story is. A quick thank you to our STH YouTube members who helped us buy this unit. If you wanna support us, you can always join down below. So I saw all of these HP Elite Mini 800s, and they were all like in that like eight, $900 range. Then I was like sitting there, I think it was like really late at night, and I was looking at my phone, and I saw one, and I think I was a little groggy or something like that, and I was like, oh my gosh, that one's only $619, and it has a Core i7 processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, a half terabyte NVMe SSD. This is an awesome deal. I must go buy this, even though it's some ridiculous time in the morning. And so I went and bought the unit and then it arrived and I realized, oh my gosh, uh, I, I bought a 600, not an 800. So I guess, uh, Oops on that one. Now, while this system has a 12th generation Alder Lake Core i7 12700T for a 35 watt part, which is absolutely awesome. We're gonna show that in the performance section. You also notice that there are a ton of different options in terms of like getting Core i5s and all that kind of stuff. I really like the Core i7. I'm gonna just say that right now, the 800 uh, G9 that we have, that one actually has the Core i5. And I think there's a huge, huge up or huge benefit at least to getting the Core i7 in this generation. Now, while I did spend some more money, I will say at least this came with a couple of interesting extras. First, it came with Windows 10 Pro. It also came with Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth. And in the box, I got, uh, well, I got this, which is a, uh, a HP mouse that has someone else's grime on it, which, uh, you know, I guess if you really needed it, you could definitely wipe this down and uh, we're well, gonna put that over there. And then uh, I got a nice little HP keyboard. And this one, nobody has used this, I don't think, because this was very clean, unlike the mouse. So I'm actually kind of excited that at least we got a couple dollars of extra stuff thrown in for this one. Okay, so let's go through the hardware on this system because uh, there are definitely some changes over the previous gens that I think are worth noting. Okay, so on the front of the system, first change obviously is the fact that it's an HP Elite Mini. It's not a pro desk or elite desk or anything like that, Elite Mini. This is also one of the newer generation just kind of faceplates. You'll notice if you go back in our Tiny Mini Micro archives that there was an older faceplate, but I do kind of like this design a little bit better. It looks nice. But the big thing, of course, is the ports. And so we have a USB type C port. Now this USB type C port is not like a USB 2 or something like that. It's not even just like a 10 gigabit per second port. It's actually a 20 gigabit per second port. So that is pretty awesome. The other two USB type A ports on the front of this are both 10 gigabit per second ports because they're gen two ports. There's also a little headset jack. These things are used in tons of call centers and those type of applications where having a headset is required. So at least we're still getting that here. I really like that they kept it. It also gives you an easy audio output. And there's a little tiny power button as well. And before moving to the back of the case, I just wanted to kind of show you this uh, on both sides of this chassis, along with the top of this chassis, you're gonna notice that there are no, um, you know, there's no perforations here. So this is a system where really the air just kind of flows and passes through it. That is super important. Many of the Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes and a lot of the mini PCs have things that, you know, they'll have vents on top or bottom that if you block those vents, they don't get enough airflow and they become very, very loud. This system has the proper airflow. So if you wanted to like stack these on top of one another, you could do that with this. Okay, now looking at the back of the system, we get two display ports and these are 1.4A ports, I think. Then we also get a HDMI 2.1 port. 
These are all driven by the internal GPU on the Intel processor. Now on the back of this unit, you're gonna see an option that we have, but I just wanna talk about the USB ports that you have just kind of standard on this chassis. So you have a block of two and then another port on the side. And those are the kind of the standard ports. So you get three standard type A Gen 2, so 10 gigabit per second USB 3 ports. You also get the standard HP power input from their you know, just normal laptop and all that kind of stuff, power adapter line. So pretty easy to go find them if you need them. Also on the back of the system, we have a one gigabit NIC, which is an Intel i219LM. That is the standard built-in NIC. It's needed if you have to, you know, if you want to have vPro support, some of these have vPro support. So you have the i219 NIC built in and it is uh, pretty darn well supported in pretty much every OS because there are so many millions and millions of units out there with this exact NIC. I do, however, wish that we got two and a half gig ethernet just because I feel like that would be a little bit more modern these days. Okay, and let's talk about the other thing that HP does that I really like that they're doing in their newer systems. You'll see that right here, we have two USB type A ports. Now these are, uh, this is probably my least favorite option of all of the options for this little slot. So this is just two USB type A and they're uh, gen one ports. So they're five gigabit per second ports. They're not like 10 or anything really fast. There are some really cool options though that they have here. Some examples are that you can get a uh, like Thunderbolt three USB four port. You can get a type C port with a uh, display, you know, alternate mode out of there as well. And then you can also get, I think like an HDMI 2.1 port. And the other one that we've done on some of the other, especially AMD systems, is that they, there is a option to get an Intel i225, two and a half gig ethernet NIC that goes there. It's pretty, pretty hard. I mean, it took like, uh, I think like more than 30 days for it to arrive from the HP part thing, but we have a link to that in the description. We've covered that on the STH main site and in the forums. Now, the other slot, this kind of blank right here is actually the second slot. And there are things like uh, kind of like some basic USB port options that you can get here, but just like low speed type A ports. There's also things like you can get an antenna kit, I think. And then um, I think you can get like a serial port for this. And I also think that this is what, if you get the uh, NVIDIA GPU option, we'll talk about that in a sec, but that's, I think, where the IO for that. So that's where like the mini display ports would go. Hey, while we're at it, why don't we get inside the system? Okay, so getting inside the system, super easy. HP uses these kind of like little thumb screws. So you just kind of like undo that and then you pop open the lid. It is super easy and boom, now you're inside. Now, this is the standard internals for the HP mini series that we've seen for a while now, but there are a couple differences that I think are worth pointing out. The first one is that you're not gonna see a 2.5 inch drive carrier here. HP does have a you know version of this, or you know they do have the options to go and have a two and a half inch drive. And there is a very tiny little connector here that we've seen in previous gens, but this system just didn't have that carrier at all. Sometimes you do get the carrier, even if you don't have a two and a half inch drive, but it's also less expensive to not include it. So I think that might be what HP is doing. Also, I mean, it's it's 2023. So like at some point, does, does HP need to go and put a two and a half drive thing in here? I, I don't think so. And one of the big reasons for that is also just to maintain proper cooling on the M.2 storage, which is I think what most people are gonna want anyway. So the big parts of the system clearly are this over here, which is our Core i7 12700T. That's a 35 watt TDP processor. Now, HP has a ton of different SKUs that you can get in there and there are different options. One thing that you will notice is that if you got the Elite, uh, 800 or Elite Mini 800, this would actually be a vPro enabled SKU, but on the 600 series, vPro is an optional feature. One of the easiest ways to know is that the Intel Core i7 sticker doesn't have vPro on it. Now, something that you will notice is that the heatsink actually has a pretty darn nice airflow guide. HP has definitely gone and upgraded this assembly from some of the previous generation systems that we've seen. Now, cooling that, we have our fan here, which is also helping to cool the memory that's underneath. And something that we have seen in some of the newer systems is that not only do you get the memory, but you also get this like little cooler flap. I don't exactly know why, but I think this is supposed to help with thermal transfer. And so under that, we got our 16 gigabytes of memory in two eight gig dims. Since this is one of HP's higher end models, what you'll see is that this is actually a DDR5 box. There are still some, I think like on the 400 series or whatever that are still DDR4. So that is a little difference in this one. I will note that we tested this with two 32 gig DDR5 SO dims and we were able to get 64 gigabytes of memory working in the system. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other features. The first thing that you'll see is that we get two M.2 slots. 
Now, I kind of wish that we had the 65 watt TDP CPU version. This is the 35 watt TDP, which I actually like from a power consumption standpoint. I actually really like the 35 watt parts, and especially in these like one liter PCs. But if, if you have two M.2 NVMe SSDs installed, I think you need the two and a half inch adapter kit because that usually has a fan underneath, which helps with airflow. The other slot that you'll notice here is we get a M.2 Wi-Fi solution. That's optional, but in this system, we have the Intel AX211, which is a Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth solution built in. One other thing I want to point out that we didn't get to test because of uh, budgetary reasons is that there, you will see that there's this like, kind of like little white connector here. And that's actually the custom PCIe connector for if you have discrete graphics. In this, there is an option just like the 800 series to get a NVIDIA RTX 3050, I think 3050 Ti or 3050 uh, discrete card. Now with that, of course, you can't put like a two and a half inch drive and you do need a lot of extra like cooling over here and stuff like that. But it is kind of a cool little feature that you could get in a system like this. So, you know, if you ever see those on, on eBay or something like that, I think that is definitely an awesome upgrade. We've tested some with the old 1050 solution and I think the 3050 would just be an upgrade. Now, something new in this generation is that this has an Alder Lake processor, 12th gen core processor. So when we get to the performance, it's really an interesting story. There are a total of eight performance cores, and we've seen eight core, core i7s before, eight core 16 threads from that, but there are also four of Intel's efficient cores in this, meaning that we have, I guess you could say, a total of 12 cores, 20 threads, but really it's like eight P cores with hyper-threading, plus four cores of just kind of the efficient cores. Now, you know, this is still a 35 watt TDP CPU, because of that core configuration, it's actually pretty darn fast at a lot of the benchmarks that we run. Part of that is due to the fact that you are getting up to a 4.7 gigahertz boost clock on the P cores. And plus, you just have a lot of compute resources because you have 20 threads. On the CPU side, this often trades blows with like the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX that we've seen at 45 watt TDP, even though this is only a 35 watt TDP part. But the other thing is that these are all socketed, which means that you can upgrade these processors later. So if you found like a Core i3 or like some kind of like, like lower power or lower performance 35 watt TDP part, you can upgrade that 35 watt TDP part into you know a Core i7 12700T, for example. That's really important down the line if you're watching this two or three years from now, because you may see that the upgrade is really inexpensive. The one caution I do have is that you don't want to go from like a 35 watt TDP to a 65 watt TDP because by doing that, you don't have the cooling. There's like a higher end cooling solution that's used in the 65 watt TDP usually. So that's just something that to make sure that you're staying within that same TDP range as you originally got in the system. So overall, the performance was very good. Now, this does have the Intel UHD 770 graphics solution built in. So if you want to do things like play games, um, you know, I, we tried doing the League of Legends test that, you know, just an eSports, like super easy title. And uh, frankly, it was it was not, this is not doing 4K and really 1080 was, was not great on this either at the same settings that we've been running some of the mini PCs on. So I think from a GPU standpoint, if that's important to you and you still want this, I would go get that NVIDIA GPU option. At the same time, if you're using this for like media, the Intel Quick Sync video is awesome. And there are lots of features here that are in the 12th gen that are just awesome from like an encoder decoder standpoint. With that, let's get to the power consumption and noise. Okay, so let's take a look at the system. I plugged it in. It comes with a 90 watt power adapter, which I'll show you a photo of. And then with the system, um, you know, I just want to kind of show you what's going on. So first off, we have now booted into the Windows 10 Pro desktop, and you'll see that on the power consumption side, this thing is down sub five watts. I and mean, we're talking like 4.6, 4.7 watts. Now it does spike up, and sometimes you'll see like spikes up to like 10 watts, and that's just things moving around and stuff. But I do think that if you kind of went with a little bit more of a uh, aggressive power saving mode, you might even be able to get this lower and seeing something like 4.3 watts pop up, I think is just amazing. The other thing you're going to notice is that at idle, this thing is super quiet. Like here's the microphone right here and uh, I'm holding this up. I mean, I can hear it at about this distance to me, but at idle, that's that's all you can hear. So it's almost silent, which is really cool at idle. Now, most of these Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes are not run at like 100% utilization all the time, but let's just kind of listen to what happens when we stress this thing and kind of really put a pretty heavy workload on it. Okay, now we're at 62, 63 watts. I don't think the fans have spun up yet and it's been going for probably about 15, 30 seconds now. You'll notice that the decibel meter isn't really changing. Then after a little bit of time, you will see that we have moved down and uh, now we're down to, like limited to about 45 or so watts. But again, this thing is uh, crazy quiet. It's definitely getting a little bit warmer, but let me kind of hold this up. 
So overall, I think that's one of the magic things about these low power Alder Lake chips, right? Hitting that five-ish, four, five watt, six watt IO range, and then going up to maybe like 65 or so, and then down is like 45, kind of like sustained usage. I just think that's a pretty darn awesome result. And a lot of people ask me, you know, why would you go with this over like, you know, an Intel Nook or something like that? That's, you know, a little bit smaller and stuff. I mean, one of my big reasons is just the fact that this thing used less power than our Core i7 Alder Lake Nook. And it's also uh, quieter because I think it's a little bit bigger and has a better thermal solution. Now, if you saw our Wall Street Canyon Nook review, you'll see that you also get two and a half gig Ethernet, Thunderbolt and all that kind of stuff with the Nook. But still, you know, I think that there are advantages to both. And this one of the big advantages here is that HP did an awesome job on the power and thermals here. Okay, now in all of the Project Tiny Mini Micro reviews, I love to have a key lessons learned. And so I guess, what did I learn with this system? To me, I really like a couple of things. First, I really like the Alder Lake processor. I think that that is much faster than what we saw previously. The one thing that I will give you a little hint on is we have the Core i5 version of the 35 watt thing in the 800. And I do like the Core i7 much more than the Core i5 in this generation because of that P-Core E-Core mix. The other thing that I really like is this whole flexible rear IO thing. Uh, you know, we've seen this in a couple of the other HP systems, but every time I see it, I just really love it. It is definitely more flexible than what you get from Lenovo or Dell. So I like the fact that HP has this. I just wish it was a little bit easier to get the modules because when we did order them, it took just forever. And then on a system like this, I guess having the extra USB ports for free is fine, but I really wish that whoever had purchased this unit before had the Thunderbolt port, had the two and a half gig one, or even just the USB type C port, because one of those three options I think are the ones that I would order and configure on any new system. So I would have liked to have seen that here, but at the same time, I get it. Somebody just went with the relatively inexpensive two extra USB ports. And having seven type A ports and one type C port on this, I think is actually pretty darn good for a one liter PC. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the HP Elite Mini 600 G9. This is the first tiny mini micro review that we've done in a long time. So I hope you enjoy it. We do have more of these coming. So if you do like the Project Tiny Mini Micro series and want to see all the new ones, well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.